Uh, I know people are still streaming in, but I got a lot of stuff to cover. I imagine there's going to be a lot of questions because there always is at these type of talks. So um, we're going to get going right away. Um, I apologize for turning off the arbitrary tech trivia. I know it's amusing. Um, so my name is Mike Harsh. Um, I'm a program manager on the Silverlight team. I've been working on Silverlight for about the last five years, back when it was WPFE. Um, we talked about it at Mix 06. And um, I'm really, really excited to talk about the phone stuff today. Um, we've been you know, working um, with the Windows Phone team to, to bring the goodness of Silverlight to the phone for um, you know, last year and change. And um, to see everything yesterday at the keynote was just really exciting and the, the kind of fruits of our labors. And so I, we're going to talk about today um, in this part, and Peter Tor's um, part directly after this, is um, you know, how you write these applications on top of your existing Silverlight skills. So um, the first thing to note is that you know, I'm going to assume that you guys already know what you can do in Silverlight. And um, if you don't, there's lots of great places to learn online. And in fact, there was a talk just before this one where Sean kind of went over Silverlight 101. Um, and that will be available for watching um, online shortly. So who here is familiar with, with what you can do in Silverlight today? A lot of hands. That's, that's really good. Um, excellent. OK, so we're on the same page. So kind of a quick, quick, quick um, overview here before we get into code, because we have a lot of fun stuff to show. Um, as you guys all saw yesterday, as you know, Scott announced, Silverlight and XNA are the basis for, for the app, app platform on the, phone, on the Windows Phone 7 series. So when you're creating um, applications, you're, you're basically choosing either you know, Silverlight for UI or XNA for UI if you, if you need 3D graphics. And um, you're, you're using managed to go to code to program against that. Um, the quick second bullet is interesting because there's been some questions and confusion around that. I want to kind of set the record straight. So for the first version of, of Windows Phone 7 series, there won't be in-browser Silverlight support. It's, it's kind of the integrated app model that you saw yesterday. It's kind of part of the phone and the integrated with the operating system. It's an outer browser model. Um, it's not the in-browser support. It's something we're definitely um, looking at. We've done some research around. Um, and you know, when the IE browser itself on the phone supports plugins, we'll be there with Silverlight. Um, and in general, if, if you guys have seen the Silverlight sessions we've done at Mix before, they tend to be kind of a lap around the platform. So it it's emphasizes what's new that you can use versus you know, existing functionality. So we're really going to be highlighting what's new and different about this um, kind of new functionality you have, your new toys, if you will, if you're a Silverlight developer. And we're going to go over that stuff here. So as far as the two parts, what I'm going to cover versus what Peter's going to cover, so we're going to do a quick intro, a little bit more than what I've said already. We're going to talk about some new input paradigms and, and how input integrates with the device. Talk about um, some new output stuff and how that works with the device. We're going to sh uh, show the web browser control, which is a little different from the one in uh, Silverlight 4. And we're going to talk about um, OS application integration, so how your, your application can kind of take advantage of a lot of the good goodness in the phone. Um, Peter's going to talk about um, application structure and the general application model. So you know, how you integrate with the back button, how you, you know, deal with orientation changes and things like that. Um, he's going to talk about controls and theming. So as you guys saw yesterday, when Scott dragged a button, and a list box onto the design surface, they look like the phone. So he's going to talk about how that works and, and how you can interact with that as developers. And he's going to talk about the, the kind of two key services that you have on the, on the kind of phone ecosystem, which is um, location and push notifications. So let's dive into the intro part. Um, the, uh, the slide guys went a little crazy with this slide. I don't know about the, the uh, hockey thing. But generally speaking, what we're going for um, is like Scott said, is not Silverlight light, but just Silverlight, just like you guys expect to have. You know, we, we want you to be able to use the existing code that you have, um, use your skills, use your resources to find code, use you know all the same places you go to learn today. We want all that stuff to apply to to Windows Phone, you know, seven series development. So basically, if you're a Silverlight developer, congratulations, you've just graduated from Windows Phone, you know, app platform school. So you're now Windows Phone developers, which is probably really really exciting for for most folks. Um, so let's, uh, let's kind of show this in action. So Sean showed a, in the previous talk, showed this to a version of this to some folks, but not everyone saw it, and I kind of want to show it as well because it's pretty neat. So what we've got here is uh, Visual Studio 2010, and this is uh, the, the full version. It's not the developer, uh, the, it's not the phone tool express view, but if you do install the phone tools, you get uh, phone support inside of you know, uh, Dev10 Professional. And what we've got is a solution here that has three projects in it. We've got a phone host project, we've got a browser host project, and we've got some basically shared code. So this thing has a, the shared code project has a control inside of it and has a 
library. It's a DLL, essentially. And both of these hosts reference this. So what we're going to show, basically, is we're going to write some code here. We're going to write a uh, super simple user control. And then we're going to run it both in the browser and in the phone emulator at the same time with the same binary. So first things first, we will we'll do a little Hello World action. So we'll drag a button on. Double click. Message box show, of course. Um, so one of the, the cool things you have here is you can do system.environment.os version, and you can actually get whether you're running an NT or CE. So that's how you tell if you're running on the phone or running inside of uh, um, the browser. And we'll just two-string that. We'll give our message box a title. And we'll give it an OK button. So build this control. You'll notice that we've got a, oops, sign surface there. We have a browser app that has our button inside of it. And we have a phone app, which also has our, our control inside of it. So if we deploy this, fire up the emulator, you see our button there. And then if we go to the browser host, You see we have the exact same code. Hello from NT. Hello from CE. So that's, that's how close these things are together. The same code can run inside both the emulator and the browser. So let's uh, stop this. Head back to the slides. So as far as what, what you have um, at your disposal, um, for this platform. So it starts with Silverlight 3. So if you're familiar with the Silverlight 3 BCL surface area, the things that you have from the UI stack um, and the BCL, the networking capabilities, that's the, the basis of this. On top of that, we've done a ton, a ton of performance work. Um, you guys all saw the AP demo yesterday. You saw how smooth that scrolling and panning was. Um, the majority of the effort we spent porting was making it fast and really smooth and making it easier for you guys to write um, fast, performant apps. Um, there's We've done a lot of work to make it easier for, you get, for folks to write apps and not have to think about some of the, you know, the subtleties of cache composition. Um, but there's still some things, there's a lot of tips and tricks to know. And so Seema um, Ramchandani has a talk at 4.30 today uh, that talks about specifically tuning your apps for the phone. Um, it's, it's a really good talk. There's a lot of in-depth detail there. I highly recommend going to that. Um, so on top of performance, you've got um, hardware integration. So, you know, there's the things you'd expect. Obviously, you need to be able to talk to the accelerometer. You need to be able to talk to, you know, the GPS chip. But we've also got um, hardware decoders for video. So we kind of tapped into the, you know, the video processor on the system so you get hardware accelerated video decode. So you can play back that, you know, the same type of videos that you, you expect to play in Silverlight. Um, we've also, you know, of course, done the natural thing, integrated with the, the operating system. So that means application model support so you can, you know, have your Silverlight app as a pin tile on the, on the start page. You can have, you know, integrate with the software keyboard. You know, we've loosened the sandbox a little bit so you can um, do things like remove cross-domain restrictions for networks, for network uh, requests. And finally, we've, we've let you integrate with the applications on the phone. So, you know, you can integrate with the hubs, as you saw in a couple of the apps yesterday. You can kind of tap into the media hub, or you can, you know, integrate with the, the photo extras. But you can also, you know, invoke other things. You can invoke the dialer, you can invoke SMS, um, you can invoke the camera. So let's go, let's go jump in to talk about inputs, because this is, this is the fun stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is talk about um, the integration that you have with the software keyboard and this, this feature called input scopes, as well as um, the kind of the, some of the built-in controls having gestures. Let's go back to our demo machine here. I literally just pressed close on Dev10. <laughs> All right, so we'll fire up the express queue. So you guys probably all saw this yesterday. Create a new project. You've got a couple templates built to you know, help you get started. We're going to start with a basic one here. So for this, this sample, what we're going to build is basically a list that has all the input scopes available and a text box and show you how those things interact. So what an input scope is, it's a hint to the text box, that, or it's a hint to the system, the software keyboard, what you want your text box to show, so, or to be 
use to input. So if you want to do a phone number, if you want to do a web address, an email address, or text,